Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week we are covering Newcastle Skywalks, which is sort of a continuation of sort of timeside modernism and sort of the redevelopment of the city in the 1960s. So if you've been following along previously, we've covered about the whole motorway system that tried to be built. I've covered about sort of the timeside brutalism of Manor's car park. And it really shows the idea at the time was to transform the city centre around car ownership. Continuing this on, in order to sort of lock in this car ownership within the city, Pedestrians obviously had to be considered. You can't you can't drive your car into the shops. So at some point you'll need to park your car towards the edge of the city centre and then walk in uh, to the shops. Plan to do this was radical as the other ideas of motorways for the city. This was through the equivalent of a motorway but for people, if they get that sort of metaphor. So the idea was to take pedestrians away and put them on another level above cars. So pedestrians could easily walk around the shops and not cross any road within the city centre. So it's a really radical idea. And this aim of being able to be in the whole city centre without crossing a single road was really like the fundamental aim of this. So these skywalks, they were built in a number of cities across the UK. I believe there's some London pedways which still remain, but I'm gonna focus on the Newcastle skywalk as that is the most local to me. So in Newcastle, these are located towards the east of the city centre alongside the central motorway and this formed the Newcastle upon Tyne East Redevelopment Plan. This was led by uh, two infamous names in Newcastle planning, which is T. Dan Smith and Wilfred Burns. So Wilfred Burns left Newcastle City Council after a while and went on to be head planner, I believe, for the government. So he went very high up and he, his sort of, his foundation of his career was built around Newcastle and these sort of fundamental radical ideas. T. Dan Smith is another notorious name within Newcastle. You see, he yearns for the, uh what was in the past, what he forgets is that someone like myself would have as many as 150 of him knocking on my door to get out of where they were living. I think he rightly deserves his own video. He's often blamed for a lot of the planning mistakes of the city at the time. It's not just one man that was able to push this through while his ideals were this. There were a whole team of people supporting him going through these ideas. This was obviously built during the 1960s and this obviously was a time of mass car ownership, a number of people now being able to afford a car than wouldn't be previously. And as I said, the idea was to sort of separate pedestrians and cars. This seems an absolute radical idea and you often see this come out of a lot of planning literature, this whole idea of the, the clash and the contest of traffic and people. It's a very delicate balance of what amount of space you dedicate to cars and what amount of space you dedicate to people. Whereas the idea of these pedestrian decks is, well, you can dedicate 100% of the space on the ground floor to cars and 100% of the space above to pedestrians. It gives the best of both worlds, allowing sort of vehicles to pass through vehicles pass freely through the city with no interruptions. So what went wrong with these schemes? As you can see, what remains of the Skywalks is a very isolated section and whilst you can draw some interesting conclusions from this alone, I think it's hard to provide an accurate conclusion based on what was actually built. Because this isn't a fully interconnected scheme that doesn't lead everywhere you want it to go, and a lot of the ideas such as shops being on the first floor level rather than ground floor means you can't judge this for what it is. So a number of skywalks are built throughout the city centre. What remains today is mainly this east section. Um, in terms of demolition, there's not been too much. Just recently, I think one bridge and a few small changes have happened, but no major demolition has happened just yet. So what went wrong was really ideals changed, this whole idea of pedestrians on one deck and cars below. What was found is a lot of these pedestrian walkways were actually quite unsafe at night because you're raised above the rest of the city. No one's able to uh, sort of passively survey you. So passive surveillance is sort of anything from apartment blocks overlooking you to say on a busy road walking at night, the number of cars going past offer passive surveillance. It almost deters people um, act antisocially because of the passive surveillance. Whilst of course this doesn't deter everyone, this can deter some people favoured within planning schemes to have this idea of passive surveillance. There was no passive surveillance on these skywalks. Whilst a number of buildings overlooked and interlocked with this, none of these provided um, any real passive surveillance. A lot of them turned their backs to the skywalks and this left with a very isolated area. So if you go up there now at night, you do find these are quite dark and quite scary, quite poorly lit in places. So that was the main reason I think a lot of these were no longer favoured due to their sort of lack of safety. 
There's also the fact the tremendous amount of costs this would have taken to build the Skywalks, building a whole new layer of the city. You can still see a few remains of places that wanted to add the Skywalks to the city that never did. So around the back of the Primark building, around the back of the Primark building, you can see some uh, concrete studs that stick out of the wall. And these were actually meant to be part of the Skywalk network that would connect around the back of Northumberland Street. The so Barclays building also on Northumberland Street. I'm not sure if it's a Barclays anymore, but it used to be it actually juts out. This is by Haymarket Metro. There's a building that juts out. Very interestingly, this was designed to be accessed at first floor level. And I believe Barclays had escalators inside that took you upstairs. So this was a building that was designed to be for the Skywalk network. So you can see a lot of places that were built during this time were almost built around this idea. Another very interesting comparison is Northumberland Street is now pedestrianised and that provides a pleasant pedestrian environment with cars rerouted around the city of the central motorway. Whilst it isn't an ideal scheme, it does work providing a nice safe pedestrian environment. The, the main negative of the Skywalks as well is the underside of the Skywalks. One of the main uh, issues is, say, for the John Dobson Street section, this has a protruding pedestrian deck which extends along the city library. This um, underneath provides a very unpleasant pedestrian environment um, because it provides a dark, dingy space which just isn't that enjoyable. So this deck did extend to the, the junction between Blackett Street and John Dobson Street, but this was um, knocked down when they rebuilt the city library. And this shows that the ideals of the council have changed and that the skywalks are no longer priority. So in terms of demolition, what I'm aware of has been demolished is two sections, one which stretched over Savile, Savile Row, connecting um, with the Savile Row set of buildings. This was knocked down when the new John Dobson Street cycle lane was built. So this shows the council's ideals have a lot more change to shared space on a single piece of road rather than elevated pedestrians and the other section which was demolished was the, as I said, the pedestrian deck above John Dobson Street as this extended out much further than was necessary. Some interesting points I'm just going to raise now are there's the Buick Court, there's the Buick Court building. Buick Court is accessed at first floor level on the Skywalk network which is very interesting. There's also a number of retail units on this sort of um, just off this plaza for Buick Court. Uh, I think there's a shisha lounge and a hairdresser or a, and a tattoo studio, which are still using the Skywalks. The Snooker Club by Hadrian House, which is the office block accessed by the Skywalks, is still in use using this en entrance from the Skywalk network, which is interesting to see a few remaining units still using it. There are a number of shutters around Hadrian House, and as you head down towards what used to be the Premier and Hotel, which are all shuttered off, and these obviously ha once had entrances from the Skywalk, but are no longer used and completely shuttered. Then you get to what I can only presume would have been a shopping parade, as you take the corner around um, above the Premier Inn, I believe it's now called the Newbridge Hotel. So this is a hotel development with the Skywalks, which run along almost part of its back. This is a section that's most enclosed. It has a small glass awning roof above with lights. This space is just very dark even during the, the middle of the day. It has a number of shutters and windows, mainly covered in graffiti and this space has been highly vandalised. At one point I presume this space must have opened out onto the Skywalks and must have been some entrance site to either the hotel or small retail units. So if anyone knows what this space once was, I've not seen any photos of it in use. I've only ever seen it in this very, very derelict date. It's really interested to see if this was wants to be a shopping parade. Could have worked, but I don't know. But this space now, um, I think a number of uh, homeless people use it because it's sheltered away, uh, obviously from the rain and weather. A lot of people ex in the city center use this as a toilet stop on the way out as it has a horrible smell. The Skywalks are still in frequent use as they provide a main route across the Central Motorway just beyond this uh, Newbridge Hotel. It's the main sort of route from Newbridge Street into the city centre and Newbridge Street West. So a number of people still use the Skywalk and this section because they have no other alternative unless you go up to the Northumbria Bridge or down to the Manors Bridge which are both aren't very good accesses over the Central Motorway. So you can really see the dilemma here. It's very hard to get across the Central Motorway. There's a number of barriers in place, which means people have to resort to using the Skywalks. The thing about uh, the development on uh, the Newbridge Hotel, so this Skywalk that runs along its back, 
a luxury hotel was approved um, to redevelop the site and uh, the intentions were knocking down the building which the abandoned building which stretches over uh, the Market Street entrance to the city as well as redeveloping the hotel and by doing this they would have closed off the skywalk on the sort of top of the hotel, destroyed the spiral bridge that leads up from Newbridge Street West. This would have left the access down onto the, just the edge of Market Street using the pedestrian walkways but it's really quite interesting that they were trying to demolish something which to this day because of the central motorway is still needing to be used this access into the city is still needed whilst a lot of people don't go up through this small parade and up onto the rest of the skywalk system they still use this section to get round to the rest of the city so i think demolition isn't the way forward with the remaining bits of the skywalk network i believe what works now and what exists now should be retained and kept but in a better state because this pedestrian link is for example this pedestrian link of the motorway is so highly used they should focus on enhancing this and making sure it provides the best route a final interesting remark is you can really tell how quickly the ideals changed regarding the skywalk system is when you see underneath the time bridge just behind the uh, the bridge tavern you can look between the gap of uh, two buildings, you see an overhanging pedestrian deck, but of concrete construction that is half built, leading from, I believe, the, the Kale Cross House um, office site. This runs down and would have obviously connected somewhere near, I think the Queen Street buildings they're called, but the ideals changed so quickly, this one was in halfway in construction, and then it's just been left now to rot. So you can see this just hanging above the city and uh, below the time bridge and it really shows the the 3d city they were trying to build at the time but yeah that's everything i've got to say on the newcastle skywalks if you've got anything i've missed anything you want to add or anything you think about what they should do with the skywalks how they should they redevelop them yeah please put them in the comments below i'll be interested to hear everyone's opinions and thanks for watching